Okay, so it looks like we're ready to get started. Um, so thank you all so much for joining and I am going to kick it over to you, Sean. Perfect, thank you, Jane. Uh, so my name is Sean Litchfield with P3 Propane Safety. Uh, we'll jump right into it. Today, we're gonna talk about documenting out of gas situations. And thankfully, we have Dave Latterell here with Perico Gas joining us today. Um, Dave, why don't you start out by giving us a little bit about yourself, uh, your role at Perico, and, and why properly documenting out of gas calls are important to you and the company. Okay, great. Thanks for the introduction, Sean. Uh, as uh, Sean mentioned, my name is Dave Latterell. I'm the Director of Regulatory Compliance at Perico Gas Corporation up here in the Northeast. Um, I've been with Perico uh, over 13 years in the industry. And as it comes to documenting leak checks, as the uh, litigious society that we uh, exist in nowadays, as well as the uh, large prevalence of the use of propane continues to grow across the uh, country. The handling of interruption of service for whatever reason, including out of gases, is just critical and tends to be the one of the more challenging uh, aspects of our role here as it comes to the fact that it is part of what we do, but properly documented to protect yourself uh, and, and do document what's being completed. It's just, uh, it's just become more and more critical in our industry. Uh, and it, it's just become a way of life and a way of operation here at Perico Gas. And using P3 has been a, a, a vessel to try to get us there. So I'm really happy to be here today with you. Nice, nice. Well, thank you. Well, maybe can you just being as, you know, part of it in the trenches with it, maybe give some examples about a gas scenarios that you, you as a company deal with out there? Uh, sure, though, uh, as I'm sure most people on this call uh, recognize there's multiple reasons why you could experience uh, an interruption of service uh, or an out of gas situation. Obviously, uh, customers change usage and how they use appliances and that sort of stuff. And when it comes to trying to forecast deliveries, there occasionally are some challenges. Of course, uh, customers also occasionally make mistakes uh, mm -hmm. and leave on appliances when they should in regards to heating or pool heat and all that sort of stuff. Uh, some of us are very well aware too that when uh, payment issues and will call customers sometimes present challenges. And of course, on some occasions, rare, but it does happen, um, a potential leak in the system has resulted in, in higher usage. So any of these things that can result in an interruption of service of the appliances, you know, uh, basically functioning off of the supply uh, can necessitate, you know, documenting a leak check after verifying the system is leak tight and of course uh, resuming service if that's part of your company policy. So when when you get when you do find these issues, whether I guess and, and this is a loaded question, because again, you could go from like you said, maybe we find a leak, maybe we don't. Um, what are the sort of the specifics that you're looking for the tax drivers to document when they come across an out of gas call? Maybe a couple different scenarios. Sure. Well, when it comes down to the importance of verifying that a system is leak free, <clears throat> uh, what most people sort of focus on the fact is on the rare occasions, if a system isn't leak free, that results in, you know, an unfortunate event to, to any level of, um, you know, potential. The fact of the matter is, is uh, people want to verify what was completed and what happened. And that's, unfortunately, that's just sort of the negative part of our industry, but it's part of what we deal with. So, Looking at what the rules and regulations are in regards to NFPA 54 and to a lesser degree 58 in this situation, uh, you know, anytime there's an interruption of service or the first time you start a system, you know, you're required to perform a leak check. Uh, obviously, the documentation of such is critical as a, you know, proof positive that it was completed. And as soon as you start to document stuff, you want to ensure that it's accurate in regards to what is actually the process. So whereas NFPA 54, ask you to uh, document a leak check <clears throat> there's also an appendix on what they call the suggested methods for checking for leakage and that's where we get to what we commonly know as a block gauge test or a high pressure test or in some locations you do low pressure test on the uh, on the appliance side whatever form you choose to complete the leak test to verify the uh, you know the integrity of this system prior to placing service you want to document according to that it was performed properly as per what is expected uh, via the code in your local authority having jurisdiction gotcha and, and that kind of comes into play where if there were a leaking system like you said there's going to be some company policy that comes into play there right some folks might lock a tank some folks might, may not i don't I don't know, maybe, yeah, talk a little bit about a, what happens sure. when you do. Well, uh, 
like everybody else, our ultimate customer service is to be able to resume service and place our customers back in service. So a lot of times a, you know, a failed leak check is the uh, basically the symptom that has us go find the potential problem, correct it, and place this, you know, the system back into safe service. <clears throat> on some occasions, though, depending on uh, where, where the appliances are, who's home or not home, a variety of stuff, at some point you may not be able to accomplish your ultimate goal. So you may have to leave a system either tagged off, depending on your company policy, locked out, depending on what goes on. But ultimately, if, these, if you can't verify that the leak check holds, which indicates there isn't a leak, then you're now at a um, basically a risk management decision as to what you want to do. So in the perfect world, we locate the challenge, overcome it, correct it, fix it, and move forward. But if you can't, because it requires additional work or it's in a, uh, you know, the leak is potentially at a location that can't be corrected at the time, you're going to have to refer back to your company policy and do what makes sense, whether it's um, make sure the system remains off, uh, potentially a tag out or lock out parts of it, the system, uh, or leave the entire system down until it can be completely resumed. I think yeah, that that that's a great explanation because the what I one thing I did hear there too was the importance of having a policy and procedure in place for when you come across those types of things. So I think that's great. And then in in terms of, I guess the training side, you know, for for, for tax drivers alike to handle out of gas calls and and potentially remediate situations, is there specific training that they have to go through, or or where's what's that like? So when we look at what guides uh, all of us in the industry, obviously NFP 54, you know, states that employees need to be trained. So when you talk about the mechanical part of this or the hands-on of potentially applying the test um, and having it, you know, uh, succeed ideally, or potentially making a repair, those are mechanical skills that come through uh, a variety of opportunities, whether it's CTEP training, uh, uh, hands-on training, what have you. In regards to training uh, on the documentation of a leak check. There's no requirement except for the fact that you want to document what you accomplished because that's what's going on here is that uh, it's not just about uh, performing the action. It's about being able to reference it in the future if needed. Yeah, that's a great point. Well, maybe a good segue into um, doing a screen share here if everybody can see that. Um, what I was thinking we could do is how to document Entering a document, um, I'm sorry, a, uh, out of gas through the interruption of service module in P3 um, and, and how simple it can be going through the process. So as I enter the information, it, it, what we'll do is we'll upload your customer list or be integrated with your backend software. When we do that, all the locations associated with that account will show up. I can then click through and I've got my reasons for interruption of service. Uh, now, throughout all of P3 is a mobile professor, and that just shows us kind of a description about everything that we're filling out. But how I do that is I'd select out of gas, continue, and then I'm going to document my leak check. So for this first example, I'm going to document something along the lines of a, uh, a leaking system. Okay, and we're going to say that we found a leak at the tank, okay? When I do that, it's gonna highlight and it's gonna alert me that I have a pressure change, that I've documented a pressure change. This is a great feature in P3 because what we're trying to do is be sure that the, the documentation that you enter, the information that you enter is accurate, okay? To, to alert you that you are actually doing a pressure change. If you are, great, we're gonna move on. If you didn't intend to do that, you can go back and you can edit the, the uh, item in which you were an error on. So I'm gonna click continue. I am gonna continue because there was an actual leak. So in this example, we talked through, we're gonna say that we found a leak at the container, so we're gonna tag this out, okay? When I tag that out, I'll put my number, my reason that we couldn't repair it, schedule that follow-up, we'll save that, tag it out, click continue, I need to email the inspection, I can perform my sniff test. Now, from a, a comment standpoint, Dave, this is where I was kind of hoping you could help me out. So again, we found a leak at the container. Okay, what, what makes sense to input 
here to make sure that we're documenting this properly? Well, the the one thing I say when it comes to documentation, uh, the critical part here is just, uh, and, and our belief here at Perico is we wanna make sure that we account for what we discovered uh, make sure we document what we accomplished and also identify next steps. So in this situation, if the container were going to be removed, uh, one thing that may be helpful uh, to share with is, is, is uh, what is the fill level at the container, if available through a float gauge, because that may just help determine uh, how many uh, people need to come get the container or if there's any challenges with potentially removing the container. Ideally, that is hopefully in our customer service uh, document as well. But here's an opportunity to say, hey, it's, uh, it's, it's down a hill and with two steps and we, the, the tank was filled uh, very recently and it's showing the 70%, for example. That's very different than you know, a, a, an empty 100 pounder potentially. Okay, and then as far as locking a tank off, that's a, is that a company policy thing? It, yes, yeah, so that would probably be a company related policy, um, which in, in, at Perico, we do secure containers. Uh, and in this situation, uh, securing the container is probably not gonna be that overly helpful for you if the container is leaking. But again, uh, it's a great segue to talk about at these type of junctures, you need to follow company policy as defined. Okay. So I'll click continue. <clears throat> and now what will happen is sort of a sanity check of the overall document, the service that you provided. It's gonna show that we've done an out of gas. Um, we have the container information that we tagged out. We have our comments associated. We show our leak check. We can then have if home, the homeowner or person that was there sign off. We can waive it if for some reason they weren't there. We can then sign our, on our end and bear with me as I use a mouse. It's a lot easier when you're using a finger. I will save it and then that gets uploaded. So then we can go and actually ultimately log into the dashboard side of things. And, and this is where you can manage these uh, out of gas components that come through. So if we're tagging out equipment, if we have leak check issues, we can drill in, we can find out what was done, um, what the issue was, back to the dashboard here, uh, and then find out what equipment was tagged. This was a container, as you see the information that we had put in there. Now, in order to remediate these issues, you know, I'll, what I'll do is I'll come back, we'll go in, and let's just say we were doing an example of a follow-up call on this exact one that we just went through, okay? So here, we're gonna plug in that same customer account number. Whoops, sorry. Go through, click to location. And now our reason this time is gonna to be to put that system or appliance back in service. I click continue. I've got my leak check. And this time we can document it properly. Show that the system's gas tight. Continue, do I need to do another one? Nope. And now what I can do is I can remove the tag on this container. It is no longer tagged out. I can inspect that container as a part of this process if I'd like. And Dave, to your point there, we can talk about the percentage that's in the tank. Click save. And now that tag's been removed. We can simply move on to the end game here, where again, we could email the, the customer. We could say um, uh, fixed, fixed leak at tank, leak check, okay, system back in service. We'll continue. And then again, we've got our document, shows us this time we put it back in service, the information about it, sign off. Save it, and when we do that, we can then log in back to the system, get into our dashboard, and we see that our dashboard's clean. So just walking folks through the process of, of how to utilize P3 when documenting and out of gas. You know, P3's not for everybody. Those um, that don't, you know, Dave, it's great to um, have you on here to explain a little bit about the proper documentation on how to do that. Um, so Dave, I don't know if there's anything you want to add in closing, and if not, we can open things up to some questions. Well, 
obviously, you know, that was a quick demonstration of probably one of the more critical things in our industry in regards to protecting us from liability. <clears throat> Not always want to focus on, on that side of it, but the reality is, is what uh, I can just speak to what we've experienced here at Perico is that uh, we've always had, you know, uh, some policy in place, but when it was, of course, more paper driven and, and person driven without an extra tool like this, uh, it was always a question mark if when you needed to find the documentation, A, if you were going to be able to locate what you needed, and B, if you did locate it, the question is what was going to be the quality function of it. Uh, obviously, that's what led us to uh, a tool here that could help uh, train as well as uh, maintain the, the, I guess, the accuracy and reduce the complacency that just falls into the everyday life of doing, uh, you know, part of a re what is really a repetitive topic. Um, so I think that's why, you know, I enjoyed being, you know, invited to be here today because P3 has been a critical tool for the success here at Perico Gas in regards to this sort of documentation uh, for both protection purposes, but more importantly, as a training tool to make sure that our employees are properly trained and completing uh, proper tests accordingly by having a checks and balance system. So <clears throat> I figured I'd uh, uh, give that plug while we're here because it has been extremely successful for us. Nice. Well, thanks, Dave. So Jane, I guess we'll kick it back to you if there's any questions. Yeah. So if you have any questions, you can type them into the questions box that you have on your screen and I will send them over to you guys once I get them. Great. So the first one that we got is, can we use this on our phones or do we need a specific device? Yeah, the, the mobile platform utilized doesn't, doesn't matter. Um, as long as essentially you can access the internet, um, then you can utilize the mobile features on P3 and um, it doesn't, so yeah, it doesn't matter. Phone, tablet, um, tough pad, you name it, it'll work. Great. And the next one is, can you use P3 with no internet? Yeah, obviously um, a lot of scenarios are going to come into play, you know, with, with it being something that's cross country, there's a ton of rural areas and spots that you might not have service. So yeah, so P3 was built so that you had, um, no matter whether or not you had a connection with the internet, it would work offline and then ultimately sync up with the database once you uh, connect back to the internet. Awesome. And then, uh, so the next question is, how does P3 assist in the accuracy of the inspections? Hmm. No, Dave, you're looking out. They're all for all for me. Um, so uh, yeah. So as you might have remembered back when we did the pressure differential, the pressure change, a drop in pressure, it flagged us. Well, that technology is built in all throughout P3, no matter what module you're you're using, so to speak. But what it will do is it'll help with the quality of data. So if you were to enter an improper leak check um, or a missing uh, end time or um, an end time that doesn't meet your company policy length requirement. Like all of those things will flag and bring an alert to your attention and let you know where you made that error. Uh, and then you can always, it also will point you back to the applicable code that you were in error on. So it, to, to Dave's point, it's a great sort of teaching tool at the same time. Um, if you're making these sort of mistakes in perpetuity, we'll sort of eliminate those things from happening. And Sean, it'll also, in some, in most instances, is a little bit intuitive too. A keystroke mistake, you know, our fat thumb uh, challenges some of us have to deal with, it should catch some of those too if the accuracy isn't there. So it also helps with the, the human error aspect as opposed to even yeah, just uh, uh, the lack of training. Yep, absolutely. So then another question we got is, is this an independent program or can this program be linked to an already live internal program? which Sean, I'm, I'm thinking maybe you can talk about integration here. Yeah, it's, so it's, uh, yeah, this is meant to um, work with your existing um, sort of software or um, billing platform, whatever that may be. So yes, we can integrate with those. A lot of folks say that we sort of pick up where they leave off when it comes to the safety documentation side, which is why we've had such successful integration um, with other backend softwares. 
So yeah, this would be run in addition to, but they can be sort of um, synced together in a way, if, if that makes sense. Okay, so that looks like all the questions we've got. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any closing statements. Other than thank you everybody for joining, really appreciate your time. And Dave, thank you so much for, for being a part of this. Uh, thanks for having me. It's, uh, when you have an opportunity to share with people, when you when you find successful stories and successful, successful tools, uh, it, it, it's easy to come on. So thanks very much for having me. Thanks, Jane. Thank you, guys.